August 23rd, 2022. That's a day that I am not gonna be forgetting anytime soon. I'm not trying to scare you. I really don't wanna have this video discourage anybody from through hiking the PCT because honestly, the chances of this happening to somebody are so small that it's really not even worth worrying about. But it was crazy and I really wanna tell this story because it was covered in the PCT videos that I made when I was out there, but I only talked about it very briefly when it happened and then I never mentioned it again, which is kinda of crazy because this story is probably the closest near-death experience I've ever had on any trail, hiking, anything in the world. And so it's long overdue that I make a video and tell you guys what happened. On August 23rd, 2022, me, my friend Brandon, and my friend Flossie were about to get to Cascade Locks, Oregon. This was our final day hiking in the state of Oregon. The next day we were gonna zero and then we were gonna cross into Washington the day after that. We were stoked, we were excited. And for the last few miles of our hike that day, we decided to take an alternate instead of taking the actual official PCT route, we decided to take the Eagle Creek alternate, which is an option that a lot, I would even say probably most PCT hikers choose to take. We didn't really know too much about it, to be honest. We had just heard from some southbounders a few days before that it was a really cool alternate. We saw some pictures. We saw there were some waterfalls and some tunnels and stuff. I don't know, it just looked sick. So around lunchtime that day, we veered off the PCT and headed out on this alternate for what would be the rest of our hike that day. And that's where the fun started. We started down the Eagle Creek alternate and right away I could tell that this was gonna be way different than what the PCT was usually like. We were going straight down with no switchbacks on very rough trail. You could tell that this trail was not graded for pack animals like most of the PCT is. And honestly, the terrain kind of reminded me of the Appalachian Trail for a minute. It was just rough, steep, gnarly stuff, but it was kind of fun because it was just different. And we were also going down too. If we were going up, I probably would have been like, me. We got down this part of the trail. It was all good, but little did we know that was just the beginning of the craziness on the Eagle Creek alternate. This area we were going through was a burn zone. I don't know when it burned. It wasn't like super recent because there wasn't too much ash everywhere, but all the trees were dead. And usually those burn zones kind of suck. I'm not going to lie. But when we got to the bottom of this really steep descent, we got down to a river and it was pretty sweet. We even found a few swimming spots. After our little swim break, we pack up. And at this point, the three of us are basically hiking together like one two three in a line which we didn't do very often on the PCT we would kind of meet up throughout the day and we would camp together but while we were hiking it was usually you know everybody go at their own pace everyone leaves at a different time in the morning but I don't know the vibe was just good today and, and so we're trucking along together and we get to this unbelievable part of the trail the trail was basically running way up above this river and on the left side of the trail was just a straight drop off for i don't even know hundreds of feet down into the river and on the right it was just a wall basically the trail was kind of carved out of a really really steep wall there was even some ropes and cables on the right side of the trail that you could grab onto and the trail if i recall is slowly climbing and the whole time you're on the side of these cliffs the river is you know a couple hundred feet below you and you're just slowly going up and at one point we got to a tunnel with like a huge waterfall going over we go through the tunnel. <laughs> we're taking photos, we're taking in all the scenery. It was just so, so cool. And man, did we have no idea what was about to happen to us. Something f***ing crazy just happened. Um, at this point, we're still close together, but we're not like side by side by side or, you know, front, middle, back. We're a little bit more spread out. Brandon was in front and I was probably about 30 yards behind him in the middle. And then Flossie was maybe 50 yards behind me. He was just a little bit further behind me than I was behind Brandon. At this point, like I said, we're climbing up a little bit. And so now my best guess is we're like 
200 feet above this river. And on our left, it's just a straight drop all the way down to the river. And on our right, once again, this trail was basically carved out of just a steep wall. And then way above us, it's almost completely vertical, but it's not quite. And so there is a bit of a, a very, very steep slope. At this point, I have my headphones in, so I'm just kind of rocking out. I'm probably listening to like Nickelback or something. No, I'm just kidding. Fuck that. And this all happens so fast, it's hard to describe. All of a sudden, I heard something. I wasn't sure what it was, but it almost sounded like a tree was falling or something. And then a split second later, I felt it too. I just felt vibrations and not the kind of vibrations your mother feels on a nightly basis when I'm with her. I mean, vibrations coming from the ground. I think my initial thought was that a tree was falling. I didn't really know what was going on, but I felt and heard something coming from the right side of me, up above me. And in this moment, I looked up, I saw Brandon who was up ahead of me. He was turned around and he was crouching up against the wall. And not only that, but he had a very concerned look on his face. Now, Brandon is a very goofy guy. He's very easygoing, very fun. And so your initial thought might be like, oh, maybe he's just like f***ing with me. Maybe he's just like goofing around, having a good time. But I had spent enough time with this guy. I could tell that something was seriously off just based on the look on his face. And as I'm looking at Brandon, as I'm registering his face, as I'm seeing him crouched up against the wall, I'm starting to put together in my mind like, okay, maybe this is a tree, maybe something is falling from the right side of the trail down the slope, heading towards the drop off. And as this is all going down, the vibrations, all the shaking is getting louder and louder. It's feeling closer and closer. And so in this instant, I just took off running. So this is the trail behind me, obviously. A freaking huge rock just fell off of this cliff. Brandon was standing like right where I am and I was like, I mean, right where these uh, rocks are is where it came over. And I just freaking booked it when I got right here. I was probably about right here maybe when it actually fell. So <laughs> pretty close. Oh my God. I started running towards Brandon and I didn't see what happened or at least the initial thing that happened because I was running away from it. But Brandon was facing me. And so he saw everything. And what he told me was that a second or so after I started running, a giant boulder, the size of a small car, those were his words, came tumbling down the slope, crossed over the trail, went off the cliff and <sighs> dropped that 200 feet and landed in the river. And it sounded like a bomb went off. It was absolutely insane. I got up to Brandon and I was like, I was shaking, dude. I was like, this all just happened so fast. In one moment, I'm just hiking along, rocking out like I always am. And then the next moment I'm sprinting up the trail. And then the next moment after that, I'm watching a huge boulder that was right behind me crash into the water and thinking like, oh my God, I was, I was that close. I was that close. I just have a picture ingrained in my mind of looking up, seeing Kyle, because he was like, just kind of, you know, wasn't sure what was going on. So, and then I looked and he saw me. And then he just started taking off in the rock. Just right so you me. saw everything? You yeah. You saw the rock? And yeah, because I heard some, some little rocks moving and I was like, oh, better get behind something. And then all of a sudden you hear the <laughs> And then Kyle looked up and saw my face. And he started yeah, you were like off. huddled. You were like huddled underneath the cliff. I was like, that's not good. <laughs> According to Brandon, who again, watched all of this unfold, he estimated the rock ended up falling about 15 yards behind me. But keep in mind, I started running just a second or two before the rock came down. So if I hadn't done that, if I had just continued on at my normal pace, or if I had stopped and tried to take cover, I don't know. I'm not gonna say it would have hit me with 100% certainty, but it was already pretty damn close, even with the running. And so I don't know, man. I don't know. The rock was big enough that it would have killed me if it had hit me. And then also, again, we're on a cliff here. So even if it hadn't killed me, or maybe even if it had just come close to me and startled me, I could have easily fallen. And if I went off that cliff, I would have been donezo and you wouldn't have been being told to subscribe to the channel right now. <laughs> Let's get this channel to 50,000 subscribers. So like I said earlier, Flossie was behind me and he was about 50 yards behind me and he was actually around a bend in the trail when the boulder fell. He did see and hear the aftermath of the boulder splashing into the water. And I just think this is so crazy because again, it's not like the boulder split the two of us and we were like right next to each other, but we weren't that far apart. And this boulder just happened to come 
between us. And think about what would have happened if we were still all hiking in a group. Because like I said, just before this happened, we had all been hiking, you know, right next to each other. For some reason, right before we got to this part of the trail, we all just spread out a little bit. But if that hadn't been the case, Flossie would have been behind me. And even if he had started running too, that still automatically means he would have been even closer to where the boulder came across the trail than I was. And I was already way too f***ing close. Either way, the boulder literally came tumbling down between us. It split us. And just try to think about what the odds of something like this happening are. What are the odds that it happens in the exact spot where we are at the exact time that we are also in a just crazy place for this to happen. It's not just some random spot in the woods. Like this is a incredibly like steep, gnarly drop off with a huge river down below. I don't know, man. I felt very, very lucky walking into town. Like I said, I was like shaking after this. Like I, I could barely even explain it on camera. And then I never mentioned it again in the PCT videos. There's just so much going on out there that I guess we kind of just moved on, but this has been something that's in the back of my mind ever since this happened. I really hope this never happens to anybody else because it was sketchy. And I think the chances of this happening to anybody else are very, very, very slim. I don't know too much about burn zones, to be honest, but I wouldn't be surprised if the odds of this happening were increased because we were in a burn zone and the ground has just been torn to shreds and everything's loose and everything's messed up. Oh, it was nuts. And another thing that's nuts is there's a ton of you guys out there that buy me a beer every single month by signing up for my Patreon. It's just a few dollars every single month. And to everybody who's on there, thank you. You guys are helping this content more than you ever know. And if anyone else is interested in helping support this channel, go to patreon.com slash kylehateshiking. And once again, 50,000 subscribers. Let's get there. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And stay safe out there, guys. Jeez.